are bacteria? Groups of cells that... They're... Un unclear exactly how to describe it. Cells that cause harm in a body? Uh, they're organisms that are, exist all over the place in yogurt and they're good for you in, the, in some ways and bad for you in other ways. They're organisms that, that live uh, in different areas and in the body and outside in the air and they can be uh, positive or negative in, in terms of their influence. So there can be good bacteria and bad bacteria. Bacteria are eukaryotes. They're uh, a type of cell that are in the world. Bacteria are small living organisms that contain a basic cell membrane and a nucleus. What is a virus? I would think a strain or uh, a type of bacteria that gets into your system that could cause you to become sick or uh, have sickness or spread disease. A virus is something that can reproduce on its own but doesn't, they're not sure whether or not it's live. <laughs> virus is like a microorganism that it's smaller than a bacteria. It's disease you catch from other people, it's still germs and stuff like that. Virus is something that can't be cured, I believe. A disease can be. I'm not exactly sure, though, what they are. A virus is basically a carrier of DNA um, that lands on an organism and injects its own DNA into the organism and reproduces inside the organism. Um, but it kind of like lacks the typical organelles that other, other cells would have. So it's, I think there's some question about whether a virus is truly a, even alive or not. What do you think of when I say E. coli? E. coli, uh, diarrhea. I think of a type of bacteria that's in bad meat and it's bad when it's in your stomach. Um, germs that are um, produced by your uh, digestion, uh, you know, that come through your body. E. coli, I think of bacteria, they can be good or, they, I mean, they don't necessarily are, are harmful unless they're in large enough quantities that they can produce kind of like a pathogenic response by generating toxins, but they're kind of, they're kind of ubiquitous. Cola. Oh, what's that? <laughs> cola. Is it a drink or something? What do you think of when I say H1N1? Swine flu. H1N1 is either the bird flu or the swine flu. Um, I think maybe the swine flu. And that uh, came about when, because um, if, if like a, a swine or a chicken gets sick and that uh, virus passes on to a human, that can be very dangerous for reasons I forget. But that, that's a lot of these diseases are um, can pass from humans to animals and back and forth in that way and uh, and then they become more dangerous and more infectious. I think of swine flu <laughs> and um, yeah I is that I don't know if that's a virus. Uh, a type of flu, strain of flu that was blown out of proportion. H1N1. I don't know. What is cancer? Uh, cancer is, I believe, a, a genetic uh, disorder. Uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, when particular cells just become, uh, go rampant and uh, out of control and take over the whole system. It's a mutation of cells in the body that causes, um, I guess, unorthodox growth and uh, uncontrolled uh, reproduction that is harmful generally, I think. Cancer is um, when cells uh, mutate and don't perform their th what they're supposed to do and they form tumors and just take over the body. <laughs> Cancer is treatable. It's almost like AIDS. They have all the cures for it. It's just what they release. 
What's cancer? Cancer is an illness that's killing a lot of people. Cancer. <laughs> cancer is a disease all through your body, different cells and stuff. What are stem cells? Uh, base level cells that can be used to do a lot of things. Stem cells. Yeah, totes. Um, stem cells are controversial. <laughs> and they have something to do with, I guess, gene therapy or, or something where you, you, you want to regrow, um, like they're trying to be able to regrow organs and stuff that you can, you can then use via stem cells and they use it to kind of proliferate a larger um, body of cells um, that can then help people in some way. There are cells taken from um, the body, usually, of, usually they're fetuses, and they can grow them to make all sorts of things. Stem cells are undifferentiated cells. Um, yeah. Stem cells, I believe they're found... Okay, they're cells that haven't been differentiated yet. Um, and I'm pretty sure they're useful in science because they can like, later go on to develop into all different kinds of cells for they're useful for research and also like regrowing things like lung tissue, liver tissue, stuff like that. All of your cells have the same DNA. Why do they look differently depending on where they are in your body? Do you want to answer? No yeah. idea. Never thought of it. So uh, I think that's probably a more complex question than I'm ready to answer, but I understand that when you're like a fetus, they start to differentiate each other and uh, has something to do with what the neighbors are of those cells. So, um, you know, different cells, I know some cells come from your bone marrow, right? Like blood cells. And so those would be related to the neighbors and the cells that they've divided from after that differentiation. And it's sort of self-propagating. But it's not perfect because I know wounds don't heal perfectly, right? Mm. So It all starts from, um, forgot that word. Yeah, but they, they're each specialized for different tasks. So um, once they go to their certain area of the body they specialize for whatever specific thing they're meant to do. Because they operate differently and they operate within their cell family differently? They grew, they developed as they grew into that type of cell. So if you take from your heart, you got heart. Take it from your uh, liver, you got liver. Depends on what switches were thrown when the cells were first forming, I think. Um, it says whether you're going to be um, a heart cell or a brain cell, and then it just forms those uh, organs. You plant a seed in May, and in August it will be a large plant. Where does the plant material come from? Um, the plant matter comes from the nutrients that you take in from the soil. Uh, well, I mean, the plant is actually, as a living organism, it grows and it, it feeds from the nutrients in the soil. And um, also, I guess, um, sunlight helps the plant to grow. And so just um, using these nutrients, it grows over time, yeah. Well, it came from, uh, came from the, uh, uh, where it was planted, the earth. Everything is uh, recyclable. And uh, Albert Einstein, if he was correct, said every, everything is either uh, uh, new or old. It's just uh, redone, it's recycled. So it's the nutrients in the, uh, the earth and uh, the molecules, uh, I assume that our molecules change very quickly from, uh, from month to month. Uh, so it's uh, from the earth, it's from the, uh, the, uh, the H2O and all the other vitamins and minerals in the earth. The carbon, which is the basis, comes from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And then there is water, obviously, that makes up a lot of the cells, as well as minerals found in, found in the soil. Uh, as the seed develops, it takes uh, uh, nutrients from the soil. Uh, if it's in a fertilized place, it's, it's basically nitrogen and phosphorus. Otherwise, it's just whatever's in the ground. Pretend I don't know anything about evolution. Describe it to me. Okay, so evolution is <laughs> when um, animals and plants um, react to the uh, environment by adapting to it in, in certain ways and it, it's sort of you adapt by um, 
you know, if a, if a sort of animal is in a certain environment and some of the offspring survive better in that environment, they will grow on to reproduce uh, and then pass their genes on. And so the, the, they will sort of select for those genes that are good for that environment or um, food sources or things like that. And, um, and so that, in that way, um, organisms change. Well, I believe that uh, evolution was from God and that uh, God created the heavens and the earth. That's what it says in the Bible. And that's what I believe as a Christian and a believer. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, this is, well, there's two different approaches you could take to this. Um, evolution. Oh my God, where do you start with that? Uh, you don't know about evolution. Um, you could start from like, Really human that evolution that from from Any apes and uh, all the way up or if you're looking at it on another aspect there's the power you know that God created man and everything and <laughs> so <laughs> evolution is the process where um, pla like living beings evolve so you would take uh, the initial matter that evolved, like the, the human beings evolve, animals evolve, the planet evolves essentially, hopefully to the better, but it could go either way, but it's, it's a process by which you have uh, living beings grow and develop. So evolution, the theory of evolution was based on the idea that um, small variations are passed on through sexual reproduction, I guess. I'm not, I'm not too clear about that, but basically if the, the people, I mean, the organisms that have a certain characteristic are able to um, reproduce more successfully, so they pass on that characteristic. Describe how greenhouse gases are linked to global warming. Can I describe how greenhouse gases are linked to global warming? Not very intelligently, no. They are accumulating in the atmosphere and they are causing this greenhouse effect, which makes the planet warmer. Greenhouse gases are linked to global warming and that, well, they're, I mean, they're the whole point. Uh, it's that there's too many greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and that's messing with the ozone layer and um, making it so that the sun can basically, it's stronger on Earth and heating it up. Greenhouse gases make a sort of shield in the atmosphere so that sunlight gets in and it's like refracted so it can get in but it can't get out. Um, so greenhouse gases um, are emitted and go up to the stratosphere and um, if there's a high concentration of the gases then the sunlight comes into the earth and instead of leaving it bounces back and just leads to a warming of the environment. Would you or wouldn't you take antibiotics if you had a cold? I think antibiotics does not affect the cold because it's a virus. Depending on what the cause of the cold was, um, whether it was just like a small virus or, it was, or if it was caused by a virus, then I would take antibiotics, but if it was bacteria, then I wouldn't. If I had a cold, would I take antibiotics? Not if I had a cold. If I had a virus or a, an infection, I would take an antibiotic, but not for just a cold. And the reason why is because it, it will it'll reduce my, my chances of fighting it off myself. So if I just take care of myself and try to fight it off myself, then I won't. Um, I would take antibiotics if I had a cold just for the, uh, the mere fact that I need my immune system to be strengthened by the antibiotics. Um, there are times where you can try to just, you know, drink some soup or drink, uh, have some orange juice and uh, you'll be fine, but I think antibiotics are very helpful. Colds are rhinovirus, right? It's a virus and the antibiotic wouldn't help. And also, it's fairly short. Just deal with it instead of <laughs> taking medicine that doesn't help.